128-core ARM V9 processors are coming. They are coming. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I'm talking about the new Neoverse N2 based processors that have just been announced by ARM. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So traditionally, ARM processors were found in mobile devices, in feature phones, and then of course, in so many different models of smartphone. And then slowly, they've started to move their way into other areas. Of course, we've now got M1 powered Max. Of course, that's an ARM core designed by uh, Apple itself. And also at the same time, we've seen an increase in use in the server area in data centers. And why is that? It's because when, of course, you've got these huge data farms, you've got thousands and thousands of servers, if you can lower the cost of the electricity, lower the cost of the cooling, if you can pack in more performance, then of course that lowers the overall cost of ownership, total cost of ownership, less bills to pay basically, which means that you can offer a better service to the customers. Now with the Neoverse processors, ARM are designing CPU cores specifically for servers, not for smartphones, not for laptops, but specifically for servers. And of course we've had the Neoverse N1 and they've been very, very very popular because we've got Amazon with their Graviton 2 processors and they've been making some interesting uh, inroads into the server market. We've now got the Neoverse N2 which was previously hinted at, we knew its name but now we have some details, one of which is it's an ARM V9 processor. I hope you saw my video on ARM V9 and secondly it can support up to 128 cores in one chip. Okay, so let's just dive in a bit deeper and see what this is all about. Okay, so in a traditional server processor, you have multiple threads sharing a single core. Now, I do have a video on hyper-threading here on this channel. If you're not quite sure how exactly that works, I do recommend it. But what ARM are saying is, well, why have two threads on a shared core? Why not have single cores that are the same as a thread, but can offer you better performance per watt? Now, that is the unique selling point of the Neoverse N2. And so, as I said, the Neoverse N2 is one thread per core rather than one thread on a shared core. And that leads to some very interesting performance per watt numbers. And in fact, in certain configurations, you can deploy this in a fanless setup. So that kind of that same thing that we're used to with smartphones and with uh, you know, laptops, ARM, power efficiency, but actually now with performance. And of course, that means you can get greater density of the servers in the racks as you're packing them up because you need uh, less space for the fans and so on. So you can actually get a lot more stuff into one rack. And that's the important thing when you have a huge uh, data center. And we know that this is an ARM V9. So this is one of the first officially announced ARM V9 CPU cores that are being made available. And because of that, it's got Scalar Vectable Extensions 2, SVE2, which means that you've got acceleration for different types of workload, including machine learning, DSP kind of stuff, and then of course media and 5G. And so just some quick numbers that ARM are putting out. Using Specit in 2006, you get a 1.4 times performance uplift compared to Neoverse N1. This is running at exactly the same clock frequency, so no tricks here because it's a 3 gigahertz or, or whatever. Okay, and you get 1.3x greater web server performance there. And uh, of course, this is ARM V9. And this is an interesting chart that just shows here, they're showing this idea of 128 core uh, CPU using the Neoverse N2, which of course is offering the best possible integer performance per socket. Now they also have the Neoverse uh, V1, which is aimed at single thread performance. So it offers 96 cores, but each single thread has got a greater uh, performance. So in Geekbench terms, it's not really what you'd apply here, but in Geekbench terms, that would have a greater single thread uh, score uh, and a lower multi-thread score. The Neoverse N2 would have a lower single thread score, but a higher multi-thread score. As I said, that's really something we do on kind of mobiles. That's not something we do uh, with servers, but that's the kind of the idea. And you can see that here in this graph, socket performance throughput. You can see the Neoverse N2, 128 cores. 128 cores offers you the best uh, overall performance. And then if you look at the performance when it matters, Neoverse Computing Advantage, you can see the V1 that offers offers you that higher single thread performance if that is what is needed for the particular workload. 
And since we're talking about the Neoverse V1, let's just quickly show this picture that Arm have showed about how wide the V1 is. It can be 15 wide when it comes to the actual issue part of the pipeline, eight wide for the fetch, five to eight wide for decode section. And then of course, at the tail end, you've got lots and lots of uh, execution units there for integers and for SVE and for Neon and for load and store. And to combine together, that gives it a very, very high single threaded performance. So what does this all mean for people like me and you if we're not about to go out and buy a multi-million dollar data center? What it means is ARM V9 is here. We can see that it scales very well up to 128 cores, no problem, air-cooled even with 128 cores. And we can see that it maintains its power efficiency. Now over the last few years in the spring, ARM has had a day where it announces its new Cortex-A processors for the mobile space. If it does the same this year, then we are hoping to see ARM V9 processors in the mobile space. So a new Cortex-A processor, A79 maybe, for running uh, high performance cores inside of a smartphone and then a replacement for the Cortex-A55 also because in a heterogeneous environment when you've got high uh, performance cores and energy efficiency cores, they need to be running the same level of the architecture, ARMv9, so that software can jump between the two of them without there being any difference in actual functionality. But some of the cores designed for higher performance, some of the cores designed for power efficiency. And so you can also guarantee, if you watch my other video on ARMv9, that if ARM are doing this, the N2 has already been announced. We're hoping to see some more ARM cores being announced uh, this year using ARM v9, then you can pretty much guarantee that Apple are on this bandwagon. And I had an interesting thought, what about Qualcomm? Qualcomm bought the Nuvia company. Now I did have a thought, does Nuvia already have an ARM v9 architectural license? Because the guy there, Gerard Williams III, was working at Apple previously, so he knew that ARM v9 was coming, and maybe in the background they'd gotten themselves an ARM v9 license. That's speculation on my point at the point at the moment, but it would be interesting to see what Qualcomm come out with in the next 12 to 18 months. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Even better still, hit that bell notification icon. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.